island of Hispaniola, home to two nations. The smaller nation on the west side is called Haiti, and the larger nation that occupies most of the island is Dominican Republic. The Dominican people found here today are a beautiful color mix from very white to very dark. And because of various mixed heritages based on different nationalities that settled here in the past, their facial features will remind you of any person often seen in Spain, Brazil, or even Haiti. The Haitians, on the other hand, seem less mixed and hold many similar facial features to certain African folk. But irregardless, both nations have a large percentage of strong and good-looking people. From my experience in the Dominican Republic, the Dominicans are far more relaxed than the Haitians. They pretty much have all the rights in their society as neither Haitians or other foreigners can vote or get much justice without having to pay dearly for it or fighting hard for their case. The Haitians are usually quite uneasy or serious looking till you pass them a smile or say hello. Then they usually light up like Christmas trees and you soon discover some very nice people behind that seriousness. From my experience, I believe this upfront seriousness amongst the Haitians is largely caused by the fact that many Dominicans either avoid them or reject them in thousands of different life situations where all the Haitians were yearning for is some smiles, kindness and some respect. As both countries are heavily plagued by corruption, starting right from the top, then you will mainly notice society split in two groups, which are the haves and the have-nots. In other words, there's not much of a well-off middle class apart from a smaller percentage found in the various towns or cities. And you will usually find that this middle class consists of ambitious business owners who employ low paid staff. Yet, that's just the way it's done here due to the structure of their society and the unhealthy economy. Hi everyone, Mr. T back again. Thank you so much for tuning in. In this episode, we're gonna look at a more serious topic. The animosity that still exists today between the Haitians and Dominicans here in Dominican Republic. Later in the video, we're even gonna have a look at a clip made by a gentleman called Alec Corday, who's a friend and filmmaker from Harabakoa. And he's gonna take us back in time to figure out what wars went on that could have caused this animosity still to roam in society today. Let's get started. In the years I've been coming to Dominican Republic, I haven't seen any physical commotion between the Haitians and the Dominicans. The only people who seem to consistently bully the Haitians are the government of their forces. Let's take a look. Here, I'm privileged to have Manuel Brito, the president of the Human Rights Association for Sasua and Cabaretto. That's correct? right, that's right, yes. Thank you for being on video. You're now, we've just seen quite a harsh clip there where the police took to a guy who they believe was selling uh, cell phone covers illegally, but this is not the first time many people have seen this, especially myself. I've seen many situations where they seem to target the Haitians. Uh, why would you say that this kind of uh, brutality sometimes kicks in? Uh, wh why are they being so rough? And why do they target the Haitians? Why does it keep going? That was, uh, that was really bad from the police. And sometimes come police here with no experience, uh, with no knowledge about the play. We don't one about police in Sosua and Cabaretes. We respect mm -hmm. people from all over the That's world. That's wonderful. And yeah. with your association, what 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 are you pushing through to make changes? What what sort of changes are you pushing for at the moment that will stop this kind of thing from happening and and well, get people to see things in a humane light? We're teaching the police how tricking the peoples. 
mm-hmm. and, and give it the best service to the tourists that come to the country. Because we need people to come to the Dominican Republic all over the world. Well, we it's competitive, isn't it? We need a tourist. The vacation, like uh, vacation thing is a very competitive industry. Yeah, so. I know, but we need, yeah. we need tourists. We need we need people on vacation to come to the Dominican Republic. Exactly. Because tourists being here is the money. You understand? Yeah. And we need we need the tourists and we need the money because this is a poor country, the Dominican Republic. Another understand? question I have for you. Why do they keep targeting the Haitians and kicking them out and then letting them back in again and that goes around and around again. Is it to make money? It's because the Haitians, they have no documents. They have no passport and they have no idea. So why is it that some of the Haitians say, like in the video I did about the Haitians' lives here, one gentleman, he said that they stopped me and that I had all the right documents but they took the 300 pesos off and then let him go. But he said if he hadn't had that 300 pesos on him, they throw them in jail and they can sit there for one or two days in a very bad environment. This is the information that the human rights need because when I see the, 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 that kind of information, I go talk with the, with the, with the Dominican president, mm-hmm. one going to talk with the generals, the police, yeah. with the boss, and, and this police get fired right away. Believe it seems 100%. like the girls and the guys who come over here are very uneasy. They feel very unsafe, even if they obtain all the right documents. And uh, I suppose you, together with your team, you would like to change this. So if they are legal in the country, they should be able to feel safe and be able to show their documents, and the police should back off and leave them alone. If, if, I, if, I, if I find down and the police they do something wrong, the police they get fired away. They get fired. They're going to lose the job right away because it's not normal and this is not right. So the average Dominican on the street and shops? Nothing, nothing. Nothing. He talking but not, not make the hand. Okay, so he may tell you, get back to your country, but... Yeah, he said, go back your country, back Haiti, back Haiti. But the police... The, and the police make the hand. Uh-huh. The policeman. Haitians are often being treated pretty rough from what I can see around here by the authorities. Ah, si. uh, and they seem to be easy to pick on. Si. So why do you think the government allows the police to keep picking on the uh, Haitians here? Ah, that, that's a good question. And my, my, from my experience, for the, the, the few months I've been here, I think that the, um, the police here in the Dominican Republic picks on the Haitians because the Haitians are the easiest ones to pick on because some of them are here illegally. Um, some of them don't have their papers, and they're easy to manipulate to get money. Because first of all, the system, the Dominican system, doesn't pay the police any money. So if I'm only making two hundred dollars a month, and I can shake down a Haitian for a couple of dollars. Of course, I'm, I'm not going to shake down a Dominican because he may be able to have somebody in political power. To if I, if I shake down the wrong Dominican, I can get in trouble as a police. But if I shake down a Haitian, who going who gonna to do something to me? I know that Manuel from the Human Rights Association were optimistic that the violence and harassment by many of the police can be stopped. However, the country's corruption is sadly so dense that I believe that unless some huge international pressure is placed on their government to eliminate this problem, then no positive changes will be seen here anytime soon. Okay, apart from the issues caused by the government with their police forces that divide the people, now let's look at what else is happening in Dominican society that shows that there is animosity going on here. One thing you'll notice is that whenever you see a work crew, they'll typically either be Dominican or Haitian. Rarely will you see a mixed crew. And any crew of Haitian workers will typically be supervised by either a Dominican supervisor or a foreigner of a different origin. From my life experience, I strongly believe that all this uneasiness amongst Haitians, the hatred and the racism that continues to fester, especially in the Dominican society, It's unfortunately very similar to the animosity seen in many other nations globally, where two groups or nations are being negatively encouraged by governments to turn their anger against each other, like between Israelis and Palestinians, Russians against Ukrainians, and the list goes on. 
They say if the fish stinks, it stinks from the head. Yes, I'm talking about the government. Central banks and the so-called elite who, like true parasites, only have selfish agendas. And unless they are brought to their knees, releasing the trillions of dollars stolen from us all, then things will only continue to go from bad to worse and become even more corrupt, including this island. What happened? No, 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 no. A lot of Duro, duro. It's a grande. Hey, Ricky. Thanks for being on video. Hey, Mr. T. What would you say is the reason why a good number of Dominicans throughout the country are upset about having the Haitians here? Well, the first thing I think it is is about the work. You know, every construction work you see around, they just work Haitians. You're not going to see one Dominican. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because the Haitians, they work cheaper. They work even harder than Dominicans. They work the whole day for like three, four hundred pesos. Dominican never going to do that. But all these Haitians are here illegal. They work in so cheap because of that but if they wouldn't be here they would pay right to Dominicans at least more money so they can work and you will, you will see a lot of Dominicans work but how many Haitians you count around here that work in that construction I don't know a lot of the work that they do do seems to be very hot sweaty in the Sun all day yeah um, do you think even if there was no Haitians here there would be uh, people Dominicans, putting their hands... They would do Domin it? Yeah, Dominican would do it. But they would pay right. You know what I mean? But wouldn't you say the constructors are the ones that are then tempted? Just like in Europe, you see a lot of people hire the Polish people. Or in US, a lot of companies will hire the Mexicans or people from other nations. Because they want it done cheaper. Yeah, it's not they want it is they need it because they're illegal in the country. Now I was talking about the actual employers, the constructors. They want to see how they can find the cheapest labor to keep their overheads down on their business. So therefore, uh, let's just say they can get a guy for uh, 800 pesos. But they want to get richer. What about us? Mm -hmm. So where's all this stemming from? What do you think needs to be done in order to fix this so everybody's happy? I don't know the real reason. The government needs to change some rules? Maybe, yeah, the, the government, yeah, a lot of things, you know, not just one thing, a lot of things, different things. Now, I've heard from some of the Haitians, they said that they've been pulled over a lot of times, sometimes even thrown in jail, even though they had all the documents. So, do you think that maybe the police are picking on them? They put them in jail one or two days. And they let him out. Do you think they actually get picked on a bit too much, those Haitians? I don't know about that. No? So, Ricky, would you say Dominicans and Haitians on a day to day basis they get on okay? Sometimes. 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 And in what situations have you seen where they don't get on? Have they been fighting? Have you watched anything? Oh, yeah, a lot here. A lot of things happen here. Everywhere in Dominican. More in La Capital. Yeah? Yeah. More Santo Domingo. Yeah, Dominicans here and Haitians, <laughs> they're always fighting. So what so, do you think is the biggest thing they fight over? Well, nothing. Always about stupid things. Well, hopefully this video can get some better understanding out there so everybody can be amigos. Thanks for being on camera. You're welcome. Cheers. So why would you say a lot of Dominicans are wanting Haitians to return to Haiti uh, and even accuse you guys of taking their jobs? Why would they do that? Uh, for me, I think it's because sometimes it's, it's, it's depend on, you know, who did something wrong or maybe sometimes depend like the way they, they did things, you know, and then they try to blame it on all of us. One of the things they say is that, well, you guys come here and you're willing to work for half the money. Uh, you know, so a constructor may 
pay somebody 500 pesos for the day to mix concrete and or hoist the buckets up you know where a Dominican may want twice as much right so they blame you guys for taking their jobs yeah. what do you think of that one I think we need to help them out too mm -hmm. most of the dirty job we're the one that do it you know they don't want to you know get them hands dirty and then when we try to survive with families and kids you know and then they're mad at us because we they say that we work so cheap and we try taking them jobs away so it's not the reality the reality it's in like some of them like working you know they got family kids to feed you know what i mean and then you know what you expect them to do they got to work you know they do what they're supposed to sometimes i see uh, yeah especially haitian workers do some pretty hard and hot jobs in the sun right would you say dominicans are not willing to do these jobs right. like they're using a pickaxe uh, to build a foundation or yeah they didn't want to do it they look at us like slavery like we're the one that's supposed to do it and then get less pay when they get you know paying better for anything that not valued that that much you know and then it is what it is. I mean, it's something like, I don't know, it's just the situation is like that. Thank you very much. Well, why would they want the Haitians to go back, would you say? Because uh, I hear that a lot. Yeah, there is a lot of Haitian here. Uh, some Haitian work hard, the hard work they made in here, but someone made a mistake. So, happened with the Dominican too. The Dominican go to United States, another place, and sometimes they work hard, sometimes they do the wrong thing. But for me, it's okay. I don't care about Haitian because uh, my job is different than the, than the Haitian job. There is only one thing that, that I don't like from the, the Haitian because they sell and descend the stuff that when we sell in the shop. Mm -hmm. We have a gift shop in here, we sell in different stuff, and they sell and descend the thing we sell it in the shop. And then we pay rent, we pay uh, electricity, we pay a lot of different things, and they don't pay nothing. And they they sell it very cheap, the stuff. You right. know, they sell it cheap and because they, they don't pay rent, they don't pay nothing. That's why. And what do you think should be done about that? Uh, should we, should they be kicked out, or should they just be uh, under the same rules as you guys? Yeah, I don't want they go out. I don't want they throw to Haiti, but I want they fix the problem. Mm -hmm. The government had to do something, maybe they put them in no one place, they know how to go around to, to make a business around the shop. Would you say that uh, Haitians are stealing jobs from the Dominicans? What's your opinion? I want to say the Haitians come to steal any jobs because there's certain jobs that I know a lot of, a lot of Dominicans will not do it. Constructions, roofing, cleaning throw away the trash, pick up trash, cut down the trees. It's a lot of jobs. They're not paying enough money. Uh, the Dominicans is going. Is not going to do it. They're not going to cut the sugar cane. They're not going to, you know, the rice. Whatever the case may be, the low paying job, they pay 500 pesos. The Dominicans is not going to do it. And the Haitians come down there and they help with the economy. Because I know I have a lot of Dominican friends. They will not hire a Dominican to do the jobs. Because Dominicans, they say some Dominicans is lazy and they're not going to work as hard as the Haitians. Now, the, the solution to that, I'm going to make it clear. I'm always going to make myself real clear. This message, I'm sending to the Haitian government. I don't have nothing against the Dominicans. The Dominicans got their own country. We got our own country. But the thing is, there be so much corruption, so much stealing from the man on top. I'm talking about the government, the one, the higher. The one at the higher, they're the one make the Haitians come over here and look for the job and get disrespect any kind of way. Now on the flag it says Lino Fela Force. The day we put our head together as one, we, we will be powerful. So now, like I would spend, don't blame. I'm always gonna blame the Haitian government. You Haitian don't stick together. If y'all would stick together, Haitian would stay home, not risking their life to go anywhere else. Looking for job, they come to Dominican Republic, they go to Brazil, they go to Chile, they go to America. They don't want to stay home. Why they don't want to stay home? Cause you Haitians don't stick together. And he said on the flag, "Linio fela force." Unity is the power. Thank you very much for your time. 
I hope you enjoy mine. Fantastic. Yes, sir. Cheers. All right. There we go. This is uh, full representation of your home country. Yes, sir. As I promised you earlier in this program, we're going to take a look back in time to see what wars went on on the island here. This is by Alec Corday, YouTube channel, Kiskea Life. Let's see what he can teach us. What up, everybody? Alec here. Nice to see you. By the way, thanks for that nice intro, Mr. T. We're coming to you straight here from our Kiskea studios up on the top of the world. Let's talk a little bit about... Is that a motorcycle? That's a motorcycle. So, let's talk about history. You know, history is a very fickle thing, you know? History is written by the winners, and sometimes also by the losers. And often the line between opinion and facts in history is very blurry. Because if a historian writes his opinion, and that becomes history, you got a problem. So here's just a little fly-through of the history, of the historic context of this conflict, and exactly how we got to where we are. But uh, suffice it to say that it is a seminal tragedy. So. Ready? And curtains. After Columbus, the island was in Spanish hands and was named Santo Domingo in honor of the Catholic priest Santo Domingo de Guzman, and the inhabitants were called Dominicans. The island became a refueling station for the gold galleons coming from the continent, but by the 17th century, French pirates had settled in the northwest, and the Spanish didn't like that because they were raiding these galleons. In 1697, Spain let France have their small share of the island, and 80 years later even divided the island among them. So by the end of the 18th century, it was now called Saint-Domingue and Santo Domingo. The inhabitants, the Dominicans and French settlers, lived for the most part in peace with one another, in a shared economic growth, and the island became Europe's source for sugar and coffee, and that made it stinking rich, particularly on the French side. It was this place that made France a global power. But making sugar takes, well, slaves. By 1789, there were about 80,000 white landowners and free mixed people of color, as well as 15,000 slaves. But in sharp contrast, on the French side, the slave population had swelled to 500,000, ruled over by a white population that numbered only only 32,000. Now in St. Domingue, the slaves were seen as cheap disposable laborers, and disposed of they were. The treatment of slaves became a virtual, well, holocaust. So with a half a million slaves and only a handful of captors, well, the place turned into a bomb. What is now known as the Haitian Revolution took about 13 years from start to finish and affected pretty much the entire island in violent episodes of wars and mutual genocides, interrupted by sporadic bouts of peace. The main characters were of course the rebels on one side and the royalist colonists on the other. But there were supporting characters as well, such as the Dominicans, the Spanish and even the British, who hoped that in all the mess they might grab a piece of the sugar action. Even the United States meddled a bit, supplying all sides with weapons. History really hasn't changed on that one. Looking for allies wherever they could, the rebels fought for, well, whatever side was on their side. So at times it was for Spain against France, then with the French against Spain, and then against Napoleon, who basically wanted to conquer all of America. In short, it was a massively violent and well, very confusing war. In the end, the rebels prevailed, and independence from France was declared in 1804. They had achieved something no slave revolt ever had completely overwhelming their captors, establishing their own nation, and, well, incidentally, thwarting Napoleon's advance into the continent. You're welcome, America. They were free at last. But then, a man named Desalines declared himself the de facto emperor of Haiti and ordered the genocide of almost all white colonists. He also marched into the Dominican side to chase down a few French stragglers, and on his way, he just raised through several Dominican towns, continuing his genocide. This massacre of French colonists and Dominicans changed the global impression of the Haitian Revolution. Instead of a brave struggle by an oppressed people along the lines of Spartacus, the world saw it as a murderous rampage by a few mad slaves and refused to acknowledge the new nation. Suddenly, everyone feared the slaves, giving new fuel to racism, hate. And this created a global racial hostility, well, that we can still feel today. But what comes around goes around and Desalin was murdered by his own people for being, well, a maniacal tyrant. Inspired by Desalin's emperor complex, other self-styled emperors and kings began, uh, well, a game of thrones, vying for power and killing each other and their own, declaring kingdoms and building castles. At one point, Haiti even split into two kingdoms. And all of this took place with the looming threat of a coming winter. Sooner or later, France would come back. So in all of this, what about the Dominicans? Well, for the past decade, they had been conquered in no particular order by the Haitians and the English and the Spanish and the French and with each conqueror bringing death and famine and illness. In 1821, an independence from Spain was declared and Santo Domingo was renamed to Spanish Haiti. 
Plans were drafted to join Simon Bolivar and his new nation of Gran Colombia, but that fell through. Suddenly, a peaceful unification with neighboring Haiti looked like a good idea. After all, by 1822, Haiti seemed rich and powerful and sort of stable now under new administration, this guy called Jean-Pierre Boyer, and Boyer was more than willing to help out the Dominicans, and so he peacefully marched into Spanish Haiti, effectively taking over the entire island. It wasn't exactly an invasion at the time, but it turned out to be one because Boyer was just another tyrant. In fact, many historians on both sides feel that what was about to happen was the ultimate spark in lighting the Dominican-Haitian conflict as we know it today. You see, what the Dominicans didn't know was that a fleet of French ships had forced Boyer to agree to pay France 150 million francs as war reparations for the revolutions. That's about 20 billion US dollars today. At 10 times the annual national income, there was no way Haiti would be able to pay this. But Boyer agreed, because he had an ace up his sleeve the Dominicans. He had just agreed to pay the French when he marched into Spanish Haiti, intending to use the unexploited riches of the Dominicans to pay France back. And for the next 22 years, he and his military ruled the island with an iron fist, bleeding it dry, even forcing conscripted Dominicans to commit atrocities on their own people. The resentment that grew within the Dominicans? Well, it's never really gone away. By 1838, resistance to the tyranny had grown, and by 1843, Boyer was toppled by a combined Dominican-Haitian rebellion. The Haitian rebels took hold of their side, and the Dominican rebels took control of their side and declared their independence from Haiti in 1844. After so many invasions and oppressions, the Dominicans were free at last. It is no wonder then that the main Dominican Independence Day that is celebrated is the one from this occupation. It was the most costly. Unfortunately, that's not where history ends. Over the next decades, the Dominicans were faced with plenty of other tyrants of their own, and more invasions. Spain tried to conquer back its lost lands, the US occupied twice, and there were at least four more Haitian invasions, until 1874 when Haiti finally recognized the Dominican Republic as its own independent nation. And then Rafael Trujillo came along in 1930. Like most tyrants of his time, Stalin, Hitler, he decided to purge all those he seemed unfit to live in his regime. So Trujillo ordered the killing of as many Haitians as possible, the biggest of these purges being the Parsley Massacre. Meanwhile, on the Haitian side, things didn't go so well either. While France reduced the debt of 90 million francs, it took Haiti 120 years, until 1947, to pay it all back, with interest. Haiti then went through a series of good and bad leaders, as well as an occupation by the US, all of which caused only more debts. And to make matters worse, in 1957, one Francois Duvalier and his family came along who became the worst dictator Haiti had ever seen, and that's saying a lot. Driving Haiti even deeper into debt for his personal gain, he drowned the people in blood and misery from which they're still trying to recover today. Now Trujillo died in 1961 and the Duvalier dynasty reigned until 1986. Haiti saw much infighting since then until the UN intervention in 2004, which ended in 2017. But despite these historic and financial ups and downs, both countries have lived in relative peace for at least 140 years now. But for several hundred years, the Dominican collective psyche was conditioned to expect and repel invasions, mostly from their own neighbor. And while not so much a racial issue at the outset, for many it has become that as well. And that's not to say that with all the back and forth, both nations did not find ways and reasons to coexist and cooperate. 17 years after the Dominicans declared their independence from Haiti, Haiti sent reinforcements to help the Dominicans fight their war against Spain. During both US occupations in 1916 and 1965, Dominican and Haitian rebels fought in solidarity against the United States. And when the earthquake hit Haiti in 2010, Dominican troops were the first to arrive on scene to help. To this day, the Dominican Republic is helping Haiti by providing free education, medical help and disaster relief. Now it can be argued that the people in both nations were thrust into this dilemma against their wills. Victims of, well, the Game of Thrones of imperialism. On one side are the Dominicans, who originally inhabited the entire island, and were then forcefully split up by Spain and France, only to be oppressed. And on the other, slaves, who against their will were forcefully removed from Africa and brought here, only to be oppressed. With such vast differences of origins, languages, religions and ideologies between the two, it is then no surprise why these two nations often seem to be, well, at odds with one another. Considering the historic events that led to our current situation, it is also obvious why a unified island would never work. But the past also shows that both can live together in peace if both sovereignties, their borders and their individual rights are respected by other nations.
Whoa, what a ride, huh? Again, as we said, this was just a very general review, general looky see through thingy of the historic events that led to our current situation. There's a lot of stuff missing. Um, there's a lot more details to it. There were a lot more people involved in it. But this gives you a general idea of what happened. So thanks for watching this, and if you want to learn more about the history of this fascinating island, as well as really visit cool places and have cool experience, then check out our channel, Kiskea Live TV. Of course, after you finish watching this episode, because it still gets very interesting. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time. All the best, and uh, back to you, Mr. T. Mr. T? Hello. Ah, there he is. Hi Joseph. How you doing? I'm good, sir. How about you? Thanks for being on yeah, good. Thanks for being on video again. What would you say is the reason why there's so little jobs in Haiti? Oh uh, what happened is sometimes the situation is getting harder for now in Haiti because Haitians and Dominicans now they don't cost the food to Haiti and they, they want to taxes they want some taxes for the Haitians and the Dominican government say there's too many Haitians, illegal Haitians here in the DR. They're not giving shit. And that's why we, we ain't getting shit. We're looking for a job situation getting harder. You know what I'm saying? So you're so, saying because the governments can't agree that it ripples down and kills industry and jobs? They, they destroyed all the opportunities, man. You know what I'm saying? Other people. It's like. And that's why you think so many Haitians are trying to get to other countries to work. Exactly. So many Haitians already get to Chile. They go so somewhere else, you know what I'm saying? They go everywhere. Else Thanks for your better. comments. All right. Hi, Craig and Catherine. Thanks again for being on my videos. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Now, you've experienced something, especially you, Catherine. You're a colored lady. And over here in Dominican Republic, uh, you mentioned to me before this clip that you don't always get treated for where you come from. A lot of them think you're Haitian, is that correct? Yeah, there's definitely uh, times where, I mean, I'm, un I'm only assuming, I haven't necessarily asked people out front, but there seems to be times where I definitely feel a uh, dislike or uh, certain looks or just even you can go into a certain colmado and they might not even necessarily want to serve you. And uh, for me personally, I haven't been rude, I haven't done anything, so I'm assuming you're judging me by my skin color. And a lot of times just assuming I'm something that I'm actually not. Not that that makes any difference. I think everybody should definitely be treated the same. Right. But there's definitely some times I'm like, okay, do you treat me this way because you think I'm Haitian, you don't like Haitians, or I'm not really too sure what the issue is, but it's definitely skin related. Definitely experienced more race of fear in the DR yeah. than we have in the States. I've been black my whole life. I came to the Dominican and I really discovered how black I am. <laughs> Put it that way. There was I didn't feel in the States that there was anything holding me back as far as my skin color. Uh, in London, you know, you're black British. I didn't, I'm not kidding. I came here and this is really the first time in my life I'm really discovering more of an upfront racism. I mean, you can experience racism in other countries, but out here it's just like, wow, they see you coming and that's it. Yeah. And it's but, it's a know. shame. Hey yeah. guys, thank you very much for being on the video. Thank you. Great comment. Take care. Thank you. At the moment, I'm fortunate to have Mr. Traveler with me from the channel Tailor Made Dreams. Let's hear what he's got to say about the topic. Now, could you please give your interjection on what you think of the whole uh, animosity that sometimes happens between Haitians and Dominicans down here? To me, it's just it's just crazy. It's just crazy. It really is. I think it makes no sense. I understand some of the history, but like I said, if, if people spend more time finding their commonalities and what we share together, like I want food, I want place to, I want a place to live, I want my kids to grow up in a, in a good in, in a good environment then you see that hey Haitians feel bleed like everybody else I mean and some sometimes and even with the Dominican Republic uh, you got a lot of people from Dominican Republic come to America for a better life it's the same thing with Haitians coming to the Dominican Republic for a better life absolutely. so I don't understand the craziness and the nonsense to me it makes absolutely no sense 
Do you think it's sometimes uh, programmed from one generation to the next? Oh, yeah. And then without too much thought, uh, the younger people just take it on like, well, granddad said so, my father says so, so they must be bad people. A absolutely. It, I call it that, that seed uh, of toxic environment. And unfortunately, a lot of people, they pass that bad seed, that toxic environment to their kids. But thank God, a lot of generations are, are becoming a lot smarter than, than our forefathers. And not wanting to represent the same mistakes that our forefathers made. And that's in any country. Because every country has their seed uh, of racism and hatred towards somebody else. But as you know, the only time that, that the country becomes great is when they start working together, which I think the government don't want to see. And I think because of, of, of the government's opinion, it, they push that propaganda and that bullshit down. I know it because I'm American, and the American government, we are the biggest propaganda machine in the world. We know how to sell bullshit all day long. Here we have Johnny, who's been in several documentaries before. Thanks again for being on camera. Thank you, Mr. T. Good to be here, as always. And cheers. I see you have the, the cool drink with you here. There you are. Coca -Cola. And a smashing sunset here at Sasua Beach. Have you seen any physical friction, or is it just an undercurrent that's uh, predominant? Well, I think, um, of course, Haitians want to come to the Dominican Republic because there's more opportunity. But I don't think the Dominicans, in general, are, are welcoming them. They put up with them. They deal with them. Use them where they're, maybe if it's a manual labor, some of those harder jobs, things that they might not want to do themselves. But they more or less just put up with them. I really don't think they welcome them or happy that they be here. But I've never seen them like physically fighting and getting into it because of that. But there's that under Lying current. underlying uh, feeling that I think they have. They're not that fond of Haitians. They'd rather see them not. Uh, Having been in Haiti, what have you seen from the government side? Do they do anything to uh, repair the country and create employment over there? Or? They don't do much for the people, but there's really not a whole lot that they can do for the people that I see. It's a, it's a small landmass with a lot of people, so they should promote people to be self-contained. So what I mean is, maybe they have a little garden, grow their own vegetables, their own fruits, maybe have some chickens for meat. Make themselves a little more, a little more self-contained rather than being relying on the government to get them a job or give them something. Well, thank you very much for your comments. Uh, my pleasure, Mr. T. And I hope to see you in another video. All right. Good day. So. Considering that there's so many Haitians needed here for various types of work, why do you think the government continues to behave like that or let their departments and offices get away with this kind of nonsense? Well, I, I think a lot of it has to do with the economy. People are struggling, and when they see other people here working and doing, working on jobs and doing the construction, because they say Haitian, most of these Haitian men and women too do a lot of the... Uh, menial tasks and the menial labor that is required in any society to be done and they do it at a very a lesser rate uh, just to have a job and to put food in their mouth so I don't know I think that the Dominicans in most cases are jealous of nothing there I mean they, they just, just because the person's working doesn't mean uh, they're doing well because as you know slaves had jobs that don't mean that they got paid and so a lot of these Haitians work very hard and they get very little uh, remuneration for what they do I don't see any hope, but certainly in Haiti, for anything happening that's good because their government should either become a province of Dominican Republic or else become a state of the U.S. or a province of Canada because they're just a terrible government that treats their people terribly. So Haitians come here out of desperation, hoping for a better life, and, sometimes, and most of the time they are getting a better life, even though they may not be treated as nicely as they'd like to be treated. It's still better than what they get at home. So they keep coming. So what can you tell me about the Haitian government? What are they or are they not doing that they could be doing? Well, if you, you go into Haiti and uh, there's no jobs, the vast majority of Haitians are not working. Uh, a couple days a week, the average Haitian goes without food. Uh, 
food is a luxury there now. It's just a, it's a human rights violation everywhere you look at Haiti. In the streets, in the mountains, everywhere you go, people are literally hungry and desperate. And people talk about a lot of crime in Haiti, but it's just desperate people. They're starving that need to, uh, if your baby's crying hungry, you're going to do what you have to do to feed that child. And a Haitian person is no different than an American or a Canadian or anybody else. They're going to do what they have to do to feed their child. <laughs> Too much people live Haiti. Too many people live Haiti. It's not fair. But anyway, they have no, they have no way, you know. And then they have no choice. They would like to do, to, to do that because they want to survive. They want money, you know, to have them serving the family. That's why they leave Haiti for another country to go to school and after to have a job to have to have the, the, the family and to have themselves. But I think this is that's all. But I can do. That's the way I understand the situation. Thank you. Bye bye. So, when people complain about, oh, they're using our hospitals, what's behind that one? Yeah, well, we have one Dominican pregnant, and then we have five Haitian pregnant, and we have a poor country. We don't have nothing in the hospital, too. So, there's pressure on the hospitals to operate on them, to fix them up, to provide band aid and care and everything no. for free? Is that? No, they don't have nothing for free. You got, we got to pay for everything we do. Uh, they do in the hospital. Well, what about the Haitians? Do they pay or they, they don't they pay? They pay the same thing. They just come there and stand around and expect to get service? Yeah. Uh-huh. And what's the government doing about that, you think? The government don't do nothing, man. I, I hope the government, the government fix that problem, man, because we have nothing. And then when they come, the problem is not the Haitian. The problem is the situation in this country. We have nothing, and then when they come, we got more problem. That's what that's the problem we have. You can see Dominican everywhere in the United States, Canada, different places, Brazil, uh, Chile, mm -hmm. different places. You see Dominican because we got we we go because we have nothing here. The government just take the money and they don't care about the people. That's the same thing, the Haitian and Dominica, we have the same problem. So it's really the governments of both countries yeah, that the government for need to be uh, fixed. They got to fix, they got to give it the money, they take the money from the from the people and they don't do nothing. You, we don't have security here, man. Power to the people! Good Dominicans, good Haitians! <laughs> Pour me déshabiller, tes bras me font prier. J'ai mis dans tes mains la pierre en forme de cœur. Ta foi et ton ordre a mis le feu dans la pluie. Ton âme est un cristal, la lumière de ma plume. Celle, celle qui empêche le sable mortel de se peindre. Celle, l'amour infini mon motera. Me peindre, viens, viens voyager dans mes rêves. Viens. Viens du côté où la lune s'élève C'est la main rêvée Au million des baisers De la nuit d'amour Avec douleur et des belles tapes Et l'enfer de la caresse Un soupir d'harmonica Peu que la plus douloureuse Peu que le plus douloureux Peu que la plus amoureuse Peu que le plus amoureux Et j'ai vu cette pierre Cette pierre en forme de cœur Cœur, oui, mon cœur Cœur Que pour me déshabiller, tes bras me font prier. J'ai mis dans tes mains la pierre en forme de cœur, 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 mon cœur. Que pour me déshabiller, tes bras me font prier. J'ai mis dans tes mains la pierre, la pierre en forme de cœur. La terre m'a choisi, donne-moi un fils. Que de notre amour naisse la poésie, la poésie. Au berceau des anges, l'aube exaltée, des yeux d'amour se bousculent, se bousculent. Jamais qu'à la perfection, je m'imagine du ciel de luxe. Quel oasis coué ces fardeaux font jaillir mes étincelles.
sans bon enfer. Viens, viens encore voyager dans mes rêves. Viens, viens du côté où la lune se lève. D'étoile à étoile, une mer de flammes et de fumée. Alors qu'elle fait de ses bras le seul royaume où je me sens comme un dieu. Pleure tes larmes, laisse-moi pleurer tes larmes. Un milliard de tonnerres, un amour dans l'espace, des diamants. Et mes doigts pris sur tes lèvres. Viens, viens voyager dans mes rêves. Viens, viens du côté où la lune se lève. Viens, viens encore voyager dans mes rêves. Viens, viens encore du côté où la lune se lève. Oui, mon cœur, cœur. Que pour me déshabiller, tes bras me font prier. Je mis dans tes mains. La pierre en forme de cœur, 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 mon cœur, que pour me déshabiller, cœur, cœur, tes bras me font prier, j'ai mis dans tes mains la pierre, la pierre en forme de cœur. Dis-moi c'est pas l'homme ça, dis-moi c'est pas l'homme ça, dis-moi c'est pas l'homme ça, dis-moi dis-moi c'est pas l'homme ça. Dis-moi c'est pas l'or ça Dis-moi c'est pas l'or ça Dis-moi dis-moi c'est pas l'or ça Dis-moi dis-moi c'est pas l'or ça Dis-moi c'est pas l'or ça Can you tell me what's the relationship like between Get that silly grin off your face <laughs> History lesson Let's have a look and see what he can put about As I promised you earlier we're going to take a look back in time and have a look at what Wars went on and f is full of f***.